Now this is where the issues become very difficult, I believe. And that is in the interpretation of results. The way water results are typically interpreted is through a maximum contaminant level. That is, a concentration of a particular substance in the water is allowed to go up to some maximum level, and then when it goes above that maximum level, it's considered unsafe. Okay. The problem is, many of the, the chemicals that are used in drilling do not have scientifically determined MCLs. Okay. Um, those that do are based mainly on high-dose studies. There's a problem with that. Many of these drugs are endocrine disruptors, some of them are carcinogenic. And these compounds have effects that sometimes are different at low concentrations than at high concentrations. So if you do all your testing at the high concentrations, you can miss important effects at low concentrations. Let me give you an example of that. The cancer drug, tamoxifen, that's used to treat breast cancers. It's a very good drug at high concentration. It, it, it blocks uh, you know, the uh, progression of breast cancer. At low concentrations, it's carcinogenic. So at low concentration, it has deleterious effects on health. At high concentrations, it's beneficial. It's backwards from what we usually think about. And this is not the only case of that. There are many cases of that. And if you go back to your biochemistry, your signal transduction, cell biology, you can see the reason for that is that compounds Drugs, toxins, toxicants work on different pathways at different concentrations. So low concentrations, they can have deleterious effects. If you increase the concentration, they'll hit on another system that could counteract that effect and have a different effect. So even if we know the MCL at high concentration, that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods. Okay. The other thing that Michelle touched on is that we know absolutely nothing about combinations of these chemicals. What com you know, two of the chemicals used together, what those effects are. There are very, very few studies on that. Uh, I, I don't mean to make fun of New York State, but, but you know, we come from New York State, so we, we see it up front. Uh, what we do in New York State is even worse. Um, what we, we decided to do is, well, we're going to have MCLs for all compounds that are used in the drilling process. We're going to use some of them that are scientifically determined at high levels, but for the other ones, we're just going to make them up. And that's what we, our Department of Environmental Conservation did. It just made up a level and said, this is going to be the level. I don't know. It's not going to be very helpful. I guess it's better than nothing, but it really doesn't advance. We believe that no substance should be used unless an experimentally determined MCL has been determined even with consideration of low dose effects. Okay. Um, generally, I talked about a few other things here. I think that, uh, this is mainly directed more toward uh, a New York audience where we don't know much about what's going on. I think you people know more, more than we do, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to actually skip over some of this um, and get to the last point. Um, one of the things that I was saying, and that's why I really uh, liked the slide from the director early on, was that one of the big problems that we really have uh, in New York and Pennsylvania, Ohio, is that we do have these two, two groups of people with a wall in between. And you know, I know people on both sides of the wall, and I know everybody is really interested in the same thing. People who are pro drilling, people who are anti drilling, we're all interested in the same thing. We want to have economic development. We want to have clean water. We want to raise our families. 
aspects of the problem. And I would like to at least second the, the uh, directors, assistant associate directors point that we need to start talking to each other and coming to some resolution. And one way to do that is to get data, understand the process better, and have a more open dialogue than we have. So I'll end with the statement that we always end with, and that is, without a rigorous scientific study, the gastroenterology boom sweeping the world. I'm going to stop here and point out that this is not, these are not issues that are just here in Pennsylvania, just in New York, just in Ohio. This is all over the world. And so we've talked to people from all corners of the world about this. South Africa, Ireland, Australia, England, Northern Ireland, Poland, etc. There are a lot of people concerned with this. A lot of people want to know the answers. Okay, so without rigorous scientific studies, the gastroenterology boom sweeping the world will remain an uncontrolled health experiment on an enormous scale. And unless we do something about it, 